<clears throat> hey guys, and welcome back to the RPG Maker BX Ace Tutorials. And this time we're going to be covering events. So, um, right now, uh, really quick, let's just go ahead and make a small map to make to link this little house to. House map. Just, just, just a little thing to link the mouse. Or er, house, not mouse. <laughs> Uh, we don't have to make this area look good. This is just showing you how to use events. So, it was a little path. Uh, again, like, I'm not really gonna make anything somewhat, like, fancy. Um. So, you know, it's not gonna look as good as the previous maps, obviously. But, uh, when making a house like this, like, you just kinda wanna have a little box there, like a, like a little black box. You right click and just simply click a door. Now, this is a door event. Um. Or control to the door event allow you know you can double click here you can select which kind of door style you want and um, door will open up and it'll transfer you to wherever you set it to transfer you don't transfer yourself right here you actually want to transfer yourself one block up or one block different than where you actually want to be because reason being is we're gonna have a teleport event teleport us back outside the house so now we made a door event now, now we're gonna make a teleport event. Right click, event, uh, quick event creation, and transfer. Or you can just simply press Control plus one. Um, easy enough. You go to this area, put it right in front of the door, retain, and bang. Press Control S to save your settings, and um, set player starting position to here. Okay, so now we're gonna test this out and see. Door goes in there. Then, as you can see at the top left, is my house. And there we go. So now we made a door event um, and a teleport event. Now we want to make a person. So let's say this person's like standing in the chair. Um, that's fine. I did. Click here. Just double click, and then here, and then you can double click here, and then you can kind of select from um, all these different actors. I'm gonna go to people five and use her. Now. Um, when over here, you can you, this is all your contents and stuff like that. Um, double click, and you can see all kinds of stuff. Show text uh, will display the game. Actually, you know what? You can actually read what it says right there too. And it's pretty much self-explanatory, really. Show scrolling text will show scrolling text. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. So let's go for now. Let's go ahead and show text. Say hi. Now, while I'm here, I want to go ahead and explain a lot of things about this area. Press F1, and you can see everything right here. Slash B shows the amount of a variable. Slash N shows the name of an actor. Slash P um, replaced with the party member. Um, so it'll it'll like, in other words, it, it'll tell you it'll say hi and whoever you're controlling as the party member, I believe. I think. Uh, slash G uh, opens the opens the currency. Oh, never mind. Slash G shows uh, it places your currency. Yeah. Um, slash C um, up to 9, I think, or 10 even. I don't know. But slash C, and then in between the box, you can change the color of the text. So, in other words, I'll show you how that's done. And all this other stuff, you know, you can just play around with this, learn it and all that. But slash C5 yodels. Uh, slash C0. Slash C zero resets the color. See how it's purple right there. I'm gonna change the color to 15, for example. Why? Um, zero is obviously white. You can see. One is the next color of your thing. And yeah, you can actually you can play around with that. Um, all right. So double click the face graphic, and we were in what? People three. People one. Two. Three. One. Two. Buckle my shoe. No. Uh, come on, now where was this person? The blue hair. I see no blue hair other than that. Three. Is that her? No. No. No, oh well, we'll have to do. She'll have to do. Alright, so click OK. And the batch entry just allows you to type a lot, like beyond the square. <laughs> Another important thing to notice. If you have a face, don't go beyond this point, like a little bit, a little bit before the arrow. Otherwise, if you're typing a lot, it goes off the screen. I mean, see, you can't even see the SDF is 
uh, the first SCM is all you can see. Um, anyways, you just don't want to go past the screen. And hold on. One. Um. Uh. Anyways. Okay, so after that, my friend just entered the room. That's all. That's why I got distracted for a second. Okay, so you just click OK. I'm gonna go ahead and explain a couple other things. Change gold is where you can increase your amount of gold. Change items is where you can change. You know, you can add an item to the the party. And the uh, looks good. <laughs> yeah, it's food. I was like, oh, that looks tasty. All right, anyways, um, yeah. The, all this stuff is self-explanatory, so kind of just like play around with events, and let's test this out and see just how well this works. Okay, go in here. Yo, what up? Hi, Yodels. All right. <laughs> so that's how you make a character event. Um, if you want to make a battle event, uh, let's have it out here. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's perfect. I'm going to explain that. So. Let's have a little monster. Uh, give it a monster too. Make it a little slimy. Slimes are always like the basic enemy. All right. Um, double click here and go to the third tab. Go to battle processing and then you can select the battle units right here. I'll go over battle units in the next episode probably, uh, depending on if I can remember to do so or not. <laughs> All right. Um, now you want to have a move around, right? So up here where it says fix, just do random. Um, the frequency. Higher, you, the highest is where he he won't stop, like unless his randomization tells him to stop. So, same as characters and trigger is player touch or event touch. So when the event touches the player, it triggers the battle. So let's test this out. Okay, hi, what's up? You can also have him approach you if you want. Or you can run a dance. No, no. Um, so yeah, this is the battle. The battle works. Okay. So now, um, oops. <laughs> Alrighty, what next? What else should I go over with? Uh, what's the other? Okay, treasure chests. Um, let's say you want to collect an item. Let's have a treasure chest like right here. Actually, you know what? It looks better right here. Um, go to quick event and go to treasure chests. Uh, let's make you can have it give you an item, a weapon, or armor, or gold. Uh, say 50 gold. So let's say you wanted to give you more than just 50 gold. Um, you would you would go into the event and you can see all this stuff right here. This right here moves the event. Um, it 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 turns it and all that. Um, right click and go to edit and you can you you can see all this stuff right here. It's pretty self-explanatory if you actually take and read it. This plays a sound effect. So, if you want to play sounds, go to tab 2, and you can actually change the background music, uh, background sound, uh, music effects, sound effect, all that good stuff. Uh, set move route is where, what you've just seen here. Um, it allows you to control either whatever event on the map or the player. So, uh, have fun with that. Um, you can play a sound effect in here, too, if you need to. That's useful if you want to make like a, I don't know, anything, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, anyways, let's say you want to give it, you want, you want it to give you a potion as well. Go to tab one. Now, notice how I right-clicked this and clicked insert. That'll actually insert something above this. So, insert or just press enter. Go to tab one and then go to items, potion one. And then go here and press or click it and then press space to edit it or just right-click and edit. 50 G and one potion. It just changes the text. Okay, click OK. Let's try this out. Lego. 50 G and one potion were found. So did it give us the items? It should give us. Yep, it sure did. All right, so it's working good. Okay. What? What, what else should I go over? There was another kind of event. Oh yeah, and, and so say um, I'm not even gonna worry about designing a new place right now. <laughs> and N allows you to set the character graphic and the price of the N. And that's pretty much that's all you have to do for that. And um, uh, okay. 
um, sorry, my, my friend Oz, we were like doing this like sign language thing, because, <laughs> alright, um, send you for one night, and you don't have enough money, but, you get the treasure chest, and you have the money, alright, so, um, I want to explain how that goes, is conditional branches, okay, conditional branches, um, are more used for variables, and this is exactly actually what they're for, but, okay, okay, I'm really kind of confusing myself here. Okay, the best way I can explain this is, you make an if, like, if this is going on, then do this, if not, then do that, or don't do anything at all. Uh, so, say, like, uh, you can have, if button down is being pressed, then right in between all this stuff, is what it would do. Else, meaning if it's not being pressed, or in this case, if your gold is not 10 or more, she tells you you don't have enough money. See, if this is, if gold is, yeah. If it is, it takes away 10 gold, fades out the screen, plays the music effect for the end, um, waits 300 frames, which is about the same amount of time as the uh, sound effect, or the music effect, recovers the entire party, and then fades in the screen. So, yep. So that's that. When no, you can have her say something if you want to, but that's that. Um, now, to make a shop, quite easy. Just make your character graphic, as you usually do, in this case this. And then go to the third tab, and then go to shop processing. And you can have potions, and Pokemans, and who knows what else. Anyways, those are your items that you can display. Uh, you can... You can actually set a price, so that's pretty cool. Um, if something like, oh crap, I canceled it. If something's too expensive, you can set your own price towards it. Or if you think it's, or if you want to make a discount place or anything like that, you can, uh, yeah, you can just kind of set your own price. All right. So, questions. Um, let's see. Show text. Um, what, on, what would you like? to shop. Now the show choices thing is quite interesting. I It's like probably one of the most important things, to me at least, in, um, in RPG Maker because it allows you to... Wait, what am I talking about? I lost a train of thought. I apologize. I'm incredibly tired. <laughs> wow. That was really stupid. Okay, <laughs> so anyways, um, shop or don't shop. How these work is when sh when you say shop, this goes on. See what I mean? But if not, nothing. So let's test that out. No, not character generator. I don't know. It's like I started saying something there completely useless and like that was weird. I'm really tired. It is two thirty two twenty three a.m. and I'm really tired. So shop and we're like, oh yeah, shop. And there are our items that we picked. So that's it for basic events, um, I hope this helped you, and I'll see you later.